going through each of these, um, you know, positional areas when we're looking at the players who got named to this roster, I think there were some surprises along the way. I don't want to say they were huge, massive, shocking. Um, yeah, absences. there's no one that we haven't yeah. seen before, right? Over over the last, yeah, exactly, precisely. Over the last year to 18 months, there's there's nothing too shocking in terms of the names that are A, either absent or B, uh, included, you know, back into, into the fold. So maybe let's talk about some of the things that surprised us, um, you know, within this roster. I, again, I mentioned before we started talking about this official drop, how, you know, the January camp, it's, it's outside of a particular window. So what does that mean for players who are playing overseas or participating in, in mid season mm -hmm. of things or preseason of, 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 in other areas? Um, what does that look like? What does that mean? Lindsay Huran tied with Olympic Lyon. Um, what was that going to look like? How are those conversations, you know, to get a player involved in, in this type of experience, but clearly, Great relationships um, is named to this uh, 24 player camp for January. Um, Andonovsky, in his uh, media availability, echoed those sentiments as such, was asked about it, said that they've got a great relationship with Leon. Those conversations obviously went well. Haran is, uh, in, in, is inclusion on this roster is, is because of that. So we're obviously going to see the continuation of her um, in the midfield and over the course of these two friendlies, I'm assuming. Um, but there was also the the question of um, the absence of somebody like a, a Mia official. And we talked about Mia official a little bit during the wishlist um, episode in on A3 and, and what that could mean and what this looks like in 2023 as the U.S. Women's National Team is sort of turning this page and kind of really getting the focal point on the World Cup. It's like literally World Cup or nothing um, moving forward this year. So uh, I know you and I were both curious about that. And and Andonovsky in, in the press conference was, again, asked about this. Um, and I thought it was important because I think you're looking at um, – players who you might have to have conversations with their domestic club to get them involved in camps and, and what that's going there. And he reiterated, he's been asked about this. I think it feels like endless times uh, already when it comes to, to me official. Um, but she's someone that has been doing quite well. Yeah. Shout out to Celeste. I see you. Um, yeah, I agree. Mia should have been called up a, a while ago. I think I, I'm, I'm looking at this and just sort of, what you hear coming out of, of the press conferences and then sort of looking at the players' performances, you just sort of it sort of feels like a little bit of a disconnect. But Andonovsky is is that that there's that they're still keeping tabs on a player like Fischel and that conversations are are still being had. Um I just sort of feel like with this current timeline, and Lisa, this is something that you and I chatted about in that previous episode on the wish list, was with there being now six months building up to the World Cup that maybe the combination of the timeline or the timing ahead of, of the World Cup is we're possibly not going to see a me official in these yeah. U.S. women's national team camps. And that that absolutely, like, it, it kind of blows my mind. I don't, I, I don't know how you look at a player like me official and um, sort of see the, the 2022 campaign that yeah. she put together. She was the global leading goal scorer. Um, and then sort of have the argument that um, you're just sort of keeping conversations and sort of keeping tabs on her, her performances. And, um, you know, we, we saw a very young player in Alyssa Thompson get called into national team camps towards the end of the 2022 season. And these weren't just any regular national team camps. We're talking about uh, getting Good invited fun. to go to Europe <laughs> and, and go again and, and get a look at top tier competition. Um, so it's it's uh, there's a disconnect for me, mm -hmm. I think, and uh, I'm hopeful. I'm, I'm hopeful for Mia Official to eventually make her uh, national team debut. Uh, yeah. But obviously, as the months go by, as the week goes by, I'm getting more and more deterred by that, and that we'll see it before a World Cup. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think you said that perfectly because we are now five months out, right? It, we were having these conversations, um, you and I on Attacking Third, the media with Vlach Wenonofsky, apparently Vlach Wenonofsky with me official from what he says months ago about her performance in, in Mexico and what she's been able to do in that domestic league and, and how she's been able to perform at a very high level, scoring goals at an incredible quip um, and staying consistent you and I have been talking about it. Everyone's been talking about it from what I can see. And the fact that we are now five months out from the World Cup and and she's still not in these conversations, I guess, enough with Black Wendonofsky or not in the front of his mind enough to be called in to get looks, whether it was in October, whether it was in November, and now it didn't happen in January. And at, at this point, if I'm forgetting about the individual names and the individual players and I'm just looking at my team, my nation yeah. going to a World Cup tournament, I don't want there to be so many drastic changes within three months of the World Cup, within four months of the World Cup. I don't. Whether that's big players coming back from injury that just haven't been playing enough, whether it's new players getting integrated in, that's something that the closer we get to the World Cup, the harder it is to shake it up. He had those opportunities to bring in the official, and he did not do that. Lachlanovsky did not do that. She's an incredible player. I think she could make a difference on this team. I think that she would contribute and and it would be incredible to watch her play in the front line alongside someone like a Sophia Smith or a a Mallory Pugman and Alex Morgan. Like, I think that that would be really beneficial for the United States, but it didn't happen. And I don't foresee it happening. Black Wenonofsky kind of alluded to that as well, that the, the roster that we're getting right now is probably going to stay consistent moving forward, barring some of the injured players that are missing from this roster or working their way back consistently. Um, I- I'm hoping that as soon as the World Cup is done in the end of August, Mia Official is right to the top of the conversation, right to the top of the list, and and she can get in on next year and, and what can happen in the fall and everything that's to come for this team. It- it's it's a little crazy to think about how much she has been able to do and why she still hasn't been called up to a camp just to get just to get a look, just to see what's out there. Yeah, no, it's um, you know, you, you look at players and how they sort of navigate their careers and and where those those seasons eventually lead them to. You know, we we're talking about a player pool that has seen players split time, whether it's between NWSL or mm-hmm. uh, clubs in Europe, whether it's been uh, women's Super League teams or uh, French Division One teams, um, and that do you have players in this larger pool that are no strangers to that, right? Having spent time in in different areas of of the globe, uh, pursuing their playing options, and it's just, um, yeah, League MX Feminil is is it a young league and young up and coming league still? Yeah, sure, uh, but I don't think that um, negates. All of the all of the things and development that Mia Official has achieved while playing for Liga MX Femino. I mean, you're talking 33 goals. That's a massive amount of goals. And uh, I just I'm just not convinced that if Mia Official is scoring 33 goals in Sweden or 33 goals in France, that she's not getting a call up to some of these uh, camps, especially in a 2022 where there was constant conversation about injury and player rotations and players having to come in and out because of those injuries and or players who are out on maternity leave. So um, I think it's going to be one of those (laughs) elephants in the room, I think, that people will um, constantly uh, keep talking about, right, until until uh, they see a player like Fischel in. But um, I'm with you in terms of the, the timing yeah. of things and that we might not see it before the World Cup. But who knows? Perhaps we'll see it. Post I know. Cup. Hey, you never know when we'll see it, if we'll see it. Um, but talking about these surprising names, I know you mentioned Lindsay Horan, considering her uh, club career and her club seasons happening right now. Um, there were a couple other names that were a little bit surprising to me. I didn't put them on my wish list. In particular, forward Ashley Hatch out of Washington Spirit. She's the 2021 Golden Boot winner. Um, she had been in the the U.S. roster and in camps uh, pretty consistently until 
CONCACAF W Championship because she went to Mexico for that tournament and ended up getting injured. She hurt her back and ended up leaving. And that's when we got to see Sam Coffey come in. So, hey, there's always a silver lining with some of these things. Um, it, it's good to see Ashley Hatch has recovered. She's done rehabbing and she's back to be able to play full force. But I'm just surprised that she has made her way back into this roster at, at this point, considering um, at the that point it looked a little bit like a battle between Alex Morgan and Ashley Hatch and Alex Morgan won that battle in my mind between two players that have similar styles that um, can play alongside similar personnel and Hatch was getting moments in games and minutes in games but she wasn't in those 15 20 minutes she wasn't blinding me with what she was able to do. Um, it was a little lackluster and perhaps it was because she was dealing with a bit of an injury. So I, I am excited to see her. She was a surprising name on this roster for me. Another one in this forward group, I'm also going to say it, Mitch Purse out of New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC. This is a player that um, has been in, called in with Lack Um, She's got 20 caps, four goals with the U.S. team. But Towards the end of 2022, she was not performing consistently and at a high enough level that Black Wadonofsky decided not to call her in again. And even with club at Gotham in the NWSL, she just wasn't scoring enough. Um, it, it was just interesting to watch a player that went from, in 2021, being an outside back, being a forward, being an outside back. She was playing all these different roles. And it almost looked like she had a little bit more freedom because she could play all these different roles. And it was like, all right, we need you to score goals. Go have fun. And now she's really settled into the front line at Gotham, the front line. She's being listed as a forward here with Black Wendonofsky, despite having the background as a defender. And I, I just haven't seen Purse perform as high as I want someone on, as a forward on my World Cup roster team for the United States. Those are the other two names that shocked me a little bit, but you also have to look at injury and who's not back. And maybe they're taking the place of some of those players. No, I'm uh, listen, I'm, I'm I'm with you in terms of, um, you know, players. Those are two players who were maybe the surprise in terms of the inclusion on uh, the this list, especially because of with, with purse specifically um, and everything that we heard from the coaching staff about um, her further absence from from the team. She was not part of those rosters, I believe, that that closed out the 2022 calendar year for the United States women's national team. You know, we didn't see her, you know, in Europe, we didn't see her um, against Germany. And it was um, interesting to see her name on this 24 player roster for me, because everything that Hendonovsky sort of implied with this was just that he wanted to see better form from yeah. her. And we heard from purse, um, in media availabilities during NWSL, and she referenced, you know, the difficulties that she had uh, throughout the throughout the year. Um, some of that, you know, was dealing with with injury, um, and the timing was also difficult for me to grasp. Right when when Purse uh, was ultimately sort of dismissed at, at that point, um, the timing was difficult for me to grasp because if the conversation is around form for a player, the the window of opportunity to sort of allow this player to get back into form is pretty, pretty limited. We're talking about asking a player to go back to an NWSL club who at this point is well out of, they were well out of uh, playoff consideration uh, in the NWSL. Gotham was a team that struggled in 2022 um, in many areas. It wasn't just in the attacking areas in which they saw uh, Mitch Purse along those lines. Um, but it, the timing of it was really, really off for me because it's like you're asking this player to go back and there's yeah. about a month or so left of, of regular season. Where is the development supposed to happen and how is that supposed to continue for, for this player? Um, and then you roll, you essentially roll that into uh, an off season for these players. And now um, she's uh, called back into this January camp. So I'm, I'm eager to see if maybe some time off um has has helped. I think time off is, is yeah. important for, for everybody out there. Totally. So not just, especially players. Physically, um, mentally, emotionally, yeah. it helps. It helps give a little reset and perhaps give you that recharge to say, you know what? They told me what I need to do. I know I didn't do it well enough before. Like, let's go punch them in the throat. Yeah, but we did have, we did have, Hatch was one of those players, I think that might have been absent from both of our 
wish list yeah. um, as well. And so to see her inclusion on this too, I think that was also one of those like surprise names for us, whether it was a, a purse or head. So I guess my question to you is like, if we don't see these injuries to to Sophia Smith or to Megan Rapino, and Sophia Smith is absent from this roster due to a foot injury, Vlad Godanovsky has said it is an un, it's not a, a very drastic or serious injury, just needs some more time. Uh, same with Megan Rapino, who's dealing with an ankle injury. So, Lisa, if we don't see these two forwards unavailable for this, do we see a hatch and do we see a purse available to go to New Zealand? No. If Sophia Smith is available to play and not injured – we don't see Midge Purse. If Megan Rapino is available and ready to play, we do not see Ashley Hatch. Um, no, I think that it allows for the opportunity for Hatch and Purse to get into this camp. This is their shot, right? Prove that they deserve to be on this roster and kick out one of the other six names that are that are on there and in, in those talks and i'm including sophia smith and megan Rapino in those conversations um lisa getting ruthless i'm here for it. lisa I'm roman being, ruthless. Ro roman brands we're going for it you asked me a question sandra i just i don't think so i don't think so but this is their opportunity right and clearly they're still in the conversations with lako and Anofsky and they've done they've done enough they've done some thing to get in there otherwise maybe it would have been Alyssa Thompson right maybe he would have only done 23 um so who knows but I don't think so at this point but there's I mean you mentioned Sophia Smith Megan Rapino, two players that um are missing from this roster due to injury I think that they're big holes to be missing at, at this point but they're injured they're not going to play so we want them to get healthy we want them to get better and recover um but it, without them, we talked a little bit about injury. We also saw the return of Lynn Williams and Emily Sonnet, two players that have been recovering from long-term injuries. They're both back on this roster. They were also both on yours and mine, our oh. wish list rosters. I am, I'm thrilled that Lynn Williams is on this roster. I am thrilled to see what she can do, how she's been working in the off season, how she's getting back and ready to play. I I'm excited about the future of Lynn Williams and what she can contribute to this team. I'm with you hundred percent. Look, you and I are um, two people that the opportunity and the privilege to, to have Lynn Williams on this show as a guest um, it, have had interviews with her. Um, I have absolutely missed watching Lynn Williams play soccer and I am so amped that she is uh, back and ready to go, apparently, in, in 2023. Um, was out nearly all of 2022 with a lingering hamstring injury. Had to get some surgery, I believe, on that. Um, but this is a player I think that Andonovsky has missed for quite some time. Um, I think when you look back into those, the early um, – Early days of the Andonovsky era, specifically, you know, 2019, as they went into 2020, um, we saw a player like Lynn Williams getting consistent call-ins to mm -hmm. his camps and seeing not only the consistent call-ins, but consistent minutes on the pitch and producing um, for this team and actually really, really providing a lot of dynamic things in the attack. And I think in 2022, this this year, where maybe they were hoping to sort of develop some more cohesion, uh, having her, you know, her absence, I think you you sort of saw at times where you could maybe pluck out a game or two and say, you know what, this game can use some some Lynn Williams, a little Lynn, here, <laughs> a little Lynn in this moment. Um, so I'm very excited to to see uh, Lynn Williams back on this roster. Um, I'm also curious to see how the coaching staff wants to reintegrate her back into this team, because also in light of her absence, what, what sort of happened in 2022 is we did see the return of, of Alex Morgan and her form. We got to continue to see the development of Sophia Smith. I mean, we're talking about MVP caliber development, uh, Mallory Swanson and her resurgence in 2022. So I'm, uh, I'm curious as to how that's going to look. So obviously we know Sophia Smith isn't uh, in included um, in this roster due to injury. Are we going to see Lynn Williams uh, get a start? Uh, in her place, essentially. What are we going to see? 
I love that. I love that proposal and that question that you just threw out there. Will we see Lynn Williams get a start? Um, I don't know how she's doing right now. Like, I'm sure she's back to full throttle. I don't think in the first game, maybe in the second. I would love to see her get a start, though. I would. Um, I, I want to see uh, Mallory Swanson, Alex Morgan, Lynn Williams, like, I think that would be pretty fun to see that front line. Um, what about Trinity Rodman in there? Like, oh, yeah. there's still a lot to be excited about with this roster. I mean, there's plenty to be excited about. Um, do you think we'll see Lynn Williams get a start? I hope so. I don't. I don't know if we'll we'll get to see her get a start, but I, I do hope we get to see her um, get some minutes. I mean, this is essentially these these would essentially be her first games back. Period. <laughs> you know, on a soccer pitch. Um, you know, since. 2022. So I'm, uh, I'm eager to see it, but I don't know if we will actually see uh, a start 